here in turn number six. It is a new day. It is December 9th, 7.30 a.m. The line of sight is two and it is dawn. The Soviets are going first. They no longer have their morale bonus and they will receive no reinforcements this turn. At the beginning of the day here, both sides will receive some much needed ammo supply. The Soviets will receive six, so that will put them at 10, and the Finns will receive four. Again, the Soviets have a greater amount of ammo, so the Finns have to decide when is a good time to use the four that they have. Let's do a quick overview and see where the Soviets are at. Here on the island is where they've taken the majority of their recent casualties. Here we have two reduced infantry companies, one reduced infantry company, a couple of full strength infantry companies with a machine gun. They still have to move and take control of that last hex on the island. We have their anti-tank guns here coming up from the main supply road. They're still quite a ways off in order to be effective and help. They have their infantry gun and mortar. Here we have four infantry companies and a machine gun. And two infantry companies, a machine gun, and then another infantry gun and mortar. And finally, up here, in these dug-in hexes, they have one reduced, two full-strength infantry companies and a machine gun there, and two machine guns, and three full-strength infantry companies. We're not getting any reinforcements. We have to decide what our course of action will be. Do I take the time to try and recover these reduced units? If I do, that's going to delay their move into the village, but I don't think it's a good idea to take reduced infantry companies in that direction, because then they're only one reduction away from being eliminated. We have a machine gun and two full strength companies here that we can send on their way. Let's see what we have defending here in the south. Two depleted and reduced companies. Two reduced there also. Not a lot of power there. So maybe we'll start moving our full strength companies and machine gun to the west, get them to the road, and then we can go into the village later. We still have several turns to make that maneuver. So let me move that reduced company out of the way. We have two infantry companies and a machine gun. The infantry companies can move five and the machine gun four. I could go one and a half, three, four and a half. I'd still be on Frozen Lake, but I would only be, the next turn I can move right to that village hex, which is only one, and get onto the road. And that keeps me out of the enemy zone of control also. So we'll move our first four and a half and we will we'll do the same move them four and a half also our machine gun which was right here we could move it one and a half three and it couldn't move again so let's move it one and a half and then two for three and a half and leave it on land and we're going to leave our reduced infantry company in place. And they are one, two, three, four away. Okay, so we're far enough away, we can attempt recovery with all three of these. So we'll do that right now, and we'll do it in the order of the first one here, then on the stack, the top, and then the bottom one. We no longer have our morale bonus, but we are four or more hexes from all enemy units, so we'll get a plus one modifier to our roll. So five or six means we recover, starting with that unit in the south. No. The top one on the stack. No. And then the bottom one on the stack. Nope. Now I have to think about whether or not I want to do a assault 
on the hotel. We are in dawn, so any indirect fire is going to be at a negative one. Let me look at the numbers and see where we're at. With what is there right now, it would be a 40 to 22, which is not good enough. I need to at least have 44 available to attack. That way I start at a 2 to 1 because they're going to get two shifts because they're dug in and Piari's there. So that's going to put me at an immediate 1 to 2. So I would have to use a lot of artillery and a lot of indirect fire to try and get the column shifts into my favor. I took another look at what I had here and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do the combat attack but I am going to prepare just in case. So I will take this reduced unit and get it out of there. It's going to cost it two to move into the forest onto the road plus one to leave that zone of control so it used up three and then we can go three and a half, four, four and a half, five pull it back here to the Kivalsami bridge so it can get a chance of recovering next time. I already have a machine gun and two infantry units there. So I'm going to move these two full strength infantry units forward. That would be one and then two. So a total of three to enter that forest and I'll do the same with that unit and with the machine gun there they are now stacked at five and that gives us the numbers that I need if I want to do the attack to at least start at a two to one before the shifts start happening. I just have to determine if I want to use large amounts of artillery and indirect fire to have a go at it. Here on the Kivalsami bridge we got our mortar and infantry gun, machine gun, and then a mortar and an infantry gun. So they're in position to help with the indirect fire attacks. That's not a problem. And the mortar, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, they're within range down here also. And I have plenty of infantry companies there. What am I gonna do with these four infantry companies? I think I'll split these infantry companies up since there's four of them there. I'm going to send two of them to the west to help with the attack on the village and send two to the north for possible reinforcements. So this would be one and a half, three, four and a half, and the same with that unit. We'll move them to the north a half, one and a half, a half and one. We'll leave them separate just so they're not as nice targets or nice potential targets. We have those machine guns there also. I'll move this machine gun forward one and a half and this one forward one to join each of those infantry companies and that leaves our mortar and infantry gun units here in the rear with that one reduced unit. These units here moving next to that hex that was still last occupied by the Finns will remove that control now that the village is in their zone of control and now they have the entire island of Kutasari. Now I have to decide what to do with these anti-tank weapons down here. In combat they only provide a strength of one and they only have an indirect fire strength of one with a range of three. Not very powerful for what we have going on here without any armor. Actually that's not indirect fire, I'm sorry. It's not in a yellow box so that would be direct fire at a range of three. So I guess they could provide some support but they can't move very far. They can only move three. I think they'll be more helpful if I slowly move them to the island and they can sit up here and provide direct fire attacks and support towards the village. So if we move that would be one and then one and a half for two and a half and that's as far as they can go. Same with this one 
and these two down here can move one and a half and then for a total of three. So we'll place them there also. Slowly move them towards the island and get them set up for future attacks. And that takes everybody. Now we have to see if we actually want to do that attack or if we're going to play conservative and wait for the bigger artillery. The Soviets were a pretty cocky lot when it came into this battle or into this war. They thought it was going to be over quickly, so I'm going to play them aggressively and go ahead and do the attack on the hotel. So I'll declare that both of these hexes, every unit there, is going to attack the hotel hex. And I'm going to use all three of my artillery batteries to help with offensive support. And we will use both of our mortars that are here. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, within range. So three artillery batteries, two mortars. I don't think I'm going to be doing any other attacks this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in the infantry guns too, both of them. Get as much indirect fire on that hotel as possible to try and get me the column shifts that I'm going to need. In defense, we have one mortar here. And we have... A machine gun there that could provide direct fire support into that hex. I should try and move these machine guns forward to to here that way they could provide direct fire in the future. So I will use my mortar. Well the machine gun that's here is definitely firing at that hex and the mortar where do I get my most advantage here? So I have four infantry companies there so we'll fire our mortar at that hex also. So we'll begin by resolving all of this support, starting with the Soviets. We have three artillery batteries, two mortars, and two infantry guns. Let's see what we have here first, as far as infantry companies for bonuses. Okay, two machine guns. So there's two infantry companies there, which means that'll apply on the ranged attack modifiers. We will start with the infantry guns, since they are the least effective. Our ranged attack modifiers, there are two infantry companies there, so that's a plus two for the Soviets. It is a dug-in hex, so that's going to drop that down to a one. This is Dawn, so that's going to drop that down again to an even number. So the infantry guns are firing on even footing, both of them are. They have a ranged attack strength of three. So we need at least an 11 to get to 14. Not very good, but again, better than nothing. An 8 is not going to help us, and the other one, no good. Now we'll move on to the mortars, who will get the same modifiers and be flat even, but their attack strength is 5. So we have a 9 plus 5 is a 14. That is enough to get our first suppression. The other mortar fires. A 7 plus a 5 is only a 12. No good there. And now we'll move on to our artillery batteries. They each have an attack strength of 5. Same modifiers again. That is an 8, plus 5 is 13, just not enough. No good. And the last one, a 9 and 5 is a 14. That is a second suppression. Now we'll do the defensive support. We know we have this machine gun firing into that hex, and our mortar also firing into this hex here with four infantry companies. The machine gun is firing at a range of two hexes, which is okay. Here at dawn we have a line of sight of two, so that's fine. We know there are four infantry companies there. That is going to give the Finns a bonus of four. They are dug in, so that's going to drop us down to a three. This is dawn. 
So we lose another one down to two. This machine gun is only firing at two, so we don't have to lose another one. We're not at a range of three or more. So we get a bonus of two when firing, and the machine gun has a direct fire of four. So we roll, get a five, plus two is seven, plus four is 11. That is no good, that's not gonna help us. We move on to our mortar. Again, we start at a four because of the four infantry companies. We're gonna lose one for the Don and one for the dug in, which is also a two. The mortar also has a strength of four. A seven, eight, nine, plus four is 13. Just not enough to gain a suppression. Just missed it. If line of sight was better, we could have self-spotted and got a bonus and got a suppression out of it, but line of sight's only two, so we had to use a spotter instead. The Soviets were able to land two suppressions. I have adjusted the ammo for the Soviets down three, which is now at a seven. And now it's time to get our combat ratio. First, we have four full strength infantry companies that are gonna give us 20, plus the machine gun is 24. Next, we have, I think three, yes, three. So that 10 is gonna give us 34, plus five is 39 plus four is 43, and another four is 47 attacking. We have two machine guns there, six each for 12, and 10 more for 22. So we have a 47 attacking at 22 which is about a 2.1 to 1, so a 2 to 1. And now we start applying all of the modifiers. So we have our suppression from our ranged support. So a 2 to 1 will turn into a 3 to 1, and another one will give us a 4 to 1. Piari is here. That's going to take it back to a 3 to 1. We are dug in, and that's going to take us back to a two to one. There are no other modifiers, so we're going to roll on the two to one combat results table. This does not bode well for the Soviets. There are only four you can roll that will not give them any losses, but at this time, taking a loss or two is okay, considering if they inflict enough, they get double points versus the Finns' victory points for Soviet losses. So we need a good roll for the Soviets, and they did not roll good. That is a six, and that is a serious waste of an attack. If we look on the table, a two to one, rolling a six is a one to zero. They inflicted nothing, no losses on the Finns, and had to take one. It's a really big failure on the part of the Soviet leadership and tactics there. They did not do a good job going at the hotel. We have to take our first one as a step loss, so we will do that with that infantry unit. Luckily, they didn't roll so bad that they had to take more than one loss there. I have a feeling if the battle continues to play out the same way that it has so far for the Soviets, there's going to be a lot of officers being relieved of their command. This has not gone well for them. They still have six more turns after this one to turn it around, but they are not doing good so far. I don't have any other attacks that I can do. I do have this machine gun down here, but it is three away from that hex. Probably couldn't do anything against it anyway, but the line of sight is only two right now at dawn. So the Soviets are gonna have to regroup and figure out another plan of attack, maybe start moving some of these units around so we can try and get a concentric attack bonus to gain another shift 
and allow us to move more units adjacent to give us a bigger column shift. We know we have 22 there, so we would need to get 66 in place to start at a 3 to 1. And I think we might have the units to do that if we move everybody available into position. But we have a reduced unit here and a reduced unit there that's going to need to recover first. And we have these reduced units on the island, but they have gained control of Katasari. So they do have those victory points at the end as long as they continue to hold the whole island. I don't think the Soviets have any other actions that they would like to take this time. They definitely don't have any more indirect fire weapons available. We shot them all at the hotel and still didn't succeed. On that two to one table, we would have had to roll pretty high to inflict losses on the Finns because they're in the hotel, so they would ignore the first loss anyway. So we would have needed a minimum of a nine or higher in order to inflict losses not a good turn for the Soviets, but hopefully they can do better going forward. I think maybe in the next turn we'll just do some maneuvering and get ready for turn 8 when the large artillery appears. Maybe maneuver then too and wait for turn 9 when the day completely breaks and the fog is gone and we won't have those penalties for artillery and really bring everything we have to bear on that hotel and try and get them out of there. But that also is going to give time for the Finns to bring reinforcements in. They still have a little bit of room there for additional units also. The Finns are ready to go. I reset the mortar that they had fired previously. The Finns are going to receive two reinforcements, the first and second of the ERP-112. And I have to develop a strategy here. I know at the hotel I have two full-strength infantry companies and two machine gun units. I have room for one more. Piari's there also. He doesn't count towards the stacking limit. We have a lot of units that still need to recover. We do have to worry about the Soviets sneaking in through the southern part of Tolviarvi. Although on the island of Katasari they have several units that took casualties that need to recover before they can move forward. So we may have a little bit of time to recover. But the problem we have is this Soviet unit here is only two away from there and three away from there, which means they won't get the bonus of being four away when attempting to recover. So that makes it more difficult. So maybe the option is we move these full strength units into that location and then back up to attempt recovery at a later time. First thing I want to concentrate on is reinforcing the hotel. And I don't want to send another infantry unit there because I don't want to make them an easy target for the Soviet artillery that's going to be coming, plus what they already have. So I'd like to move a machine gun unit forward. We have this unit, or two of them here, but we only have room for one. They can move four, so we could move, and we're already on the road, so that would be a half and then one, and then a half for one and a half. And then the hotel is considered a normal forest hex, and that's adjacent to enemy, so we'd have to pay cost of two. So we're good. That'd be one and a half, and then two for three and a half. So we'll take one of these machine gun units and move them into position to help defend the hotel. And now we are at our stacking limit of five units there. Two infantry companies, three machine gun units. And we have a machine gun unit there, already in position and dug in. Our line of sight is two here at dawn, so this hex is within range for direct fire attacks and support. And I think the smart thing to do would be to move this machine gun into the same position to allow it to help out also. Let's do that now. Now we have two machine gun units there, and here we have our mortar and an infantry company. Well, the infantry company can fire at a range of two also. So maybe we leave the mortar there to stay dug in and move the infantry company in position here at the gravel pits. Yeah, let's do that. It's not a bad idea. They're not a very strong 
ranged unit, but they can lend support, maybe help out. That's all the moves I'm going to make in here right now. I don't want to move anybody around or do any attacks here, but I can do some direct fire attacks at the end of the phase where I'm done moving everybody. And by having them in position, I can actually use them twice in a turn. And what I mean by that is I could use them on my turn as direct fire attack or direct fire support. And then on the Soviet's turn, I could use them as a defensive support. I couldn't use them twice in my turn. I can't use them as a direct fire attack and then use them as direct fire support if I chose to attack with my units that are stacked next to them. Let's head over to the village and see what we're going to do there. We do have these Soviet units to worry about. They're both at full strength there. These are both reduced and then those are both at full strength. And in the village we have two reduced units there that need to recover. Same there. But again, they are within three or less, so they would get no bonus, so they'd just have to roll a six flat out, and that's not gonna be very wise to waste time doing that. This unit's far enough away, they can attempt recovery. That one is recovered. And then we have one there that is also reduced. So I'll do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to move along the road to bring that unit to that location. That way they can hold the dug-in status. So let me put them there. And then I'm going to have these units retreat. I'm just going to decide where I'm going to have them go to. I should probably have them pull back a good distance because if these Soviet units move into the south and I only moved them here, again, they won't be able to recover. So I should probably drop them back much further to the north. If these Soviet units move, that would be one, and then they'd be on the roads. So we'll go back. We're already on the road, so it would be one, two, is that far enough? No, because if they get there, so let's drop them back a little bit more. Three, and that should be far enough. I'll stay on the road. One, two, three. And here we have our reduced units. First, we'll move our full strength unit into place remain dug in and now we'll move them out of the area one two three we'll go a little bit north of that unit do the same there they can't attempt recovery right now but they should be far enough out of position of worrying about the Soviets, one, two, three. So as long as the Soviets don't get any closer than here, which would be more difficult for them because if they follow the roads, they're gonna end up in my zone of control and not able to go far enough to disrupt the recovery attempt. So I'm going to attempt recovery. Well, the first roll will be for the bicycle unit here and the second for the one there. The only bonus we get to apply is the fact that we're four or more hexes from enemy units. So we need a five or a six. The first roll, successful, nice. We got a recovery. And the second, also perfect. Finally, good rolls. Good news for the Finns, bad news for the Soviets because we are now regaining the strength that we had previously lost or started with. So we're doing a lot better with what we have here as far as defense. I do have that full strength unit there that I should probably move further to the south because of these Soviet units that are going to be coming. And then I had this one here that was already full strength. Can't move it because it's by itself. I'm going to move them one and two. That way they're here at the southern 
point of Tolvi RV, and with a range of two, they can make a direct fire attack on those Soviets that are just to the south of them. And that was out of frame when I was showing you, but so right here, we're only two away, and we have a line of sight of two. It would be a really lucky shot if we did anything. I don't even know if it'll be worth it, but I'll, I'll check out on the ranged attack table to see if we can even inflict any losses. Now everybody that's in defense here, dug in, is full strength. We have our units that need to recover that we pulled off the front lines, and we have our reinforcements here just off the map. They can move six. Six will get them three, four, five, right here into the village. And that's about as far as I can move. I can't use extended movement because I would get it within four. So we'll take one of them and go three, four, five, and six. And the same with the other one, except we'll stop in that hex there. And that'll give us most of the hexes defended. The only one left is here. Of the eight hexes that comprise Tolvi Arvi, so if the Soviets don't come in right away, that'll give us some time to dig in there. Now we want to consider doing some ranged attacks. We only have a line of sight of two. We have these two infantry companies here that can fire, but they only have a strength of two. Is it worth firing at these units here? They are on a frozen lake, it looks like that is more frozen lake, so that would count as a frozen lake. If we fire, we're going to get plus two for their infantry companies, plus two because the Soviets, because they're Soviet units on a frozen lake. Then we're going to lose one because of being Dawn, so we get plus three. The best we could roll would be a 12, that would give us a 15 plus our 2 would give us a 17. So if we roll a 12, that'll push us into the 17 and cause a step reduction. Even though the chance is very slim, it's not going to hurt us to do some direct fire attacks from there. So we'll do that with both of these units. Roll and see if we can get some 12s. So again, we only have a plus 3. Plus our 2 is 5, so we need a 12. First we'll roll for the first unit. Nope, eh, we got a 6. We made it halfway. And the second unit, no luck. That was worth a shot though. We can do the same here with our machine gun units that are not adjacent. So we have two of them. Have to keep in mind that they are dug in here. And how many infantry units do they have here? I think they really stacked them up here. Yeah, there's four of them there, so that's a pretty sizable bonus for us. So most likely it's worth taking a shot, even though they are dug in. We're going to receive plus four for the four infantry companies. They're not on a frozen lake, though. They are dug in. So that's going to take two off because it's direct fire and we're going to lose one for Dawn taking us all the way down to plus one but they have a strength of four which would give them five added on to their roll. Looks like we're in the same circumstance here. We would need a 12 plus five to give us 17 but maybe we'll land some suppressions but they would go away at the end of our turn anyway. Let's give it a shot see if we can roll some 12s. Well, here we go again. Nope. Oh, <laughs> so close. A 16. And I think that's all we want to do. I don't really want to use these units to attack right now, especially since my indirect fire weapons are not very effective. At least my artillery is not. I do have my mortar here that I could fire. It has a strength of four. There's really nothing within range that's going to be 
hurt by it because they're dug in and the otters for anything else but these units way down here and they're more than six away so that's not going to help. So our mortar will just stand down on the western side of the Heva Salami Bridge. We have our units pulled back to recover. We have some reinforcements that came in here. We did recover here so our, our line along the frozen lake is set. We pulled our infantry units into the hotel. I'm sorry, machine gun unit into there to help with our defense. And I believe that is all I'm going to do with the fins this turn. In the next turn, turn seven, our first morning turn, nobody is receiving reinforcements, but we will get our replacement points. And I'll explain how those work at the beginning of the next turn, which will be the Soviets going at 9 a.m.